Now we're going to talk about test crosses. Um, so test crosses are used to determine if a plant or animal is homozygous or heterozygous for a dominant trait. So both of these would represent the dominant trait because in this case they're both dominant, so that's the phenotype. And then in this case it has a recessive allele, but this dominant gene masks the other one, so it'll also look dominant. So we can cross a known individual with an unknown to find out what the unknown is. And then when we cross them and we can look at their offspring to find out whether it is a homozygous dominant or if it's heterozygous and it has a little recessive allele. Okay, so we're going to look at chihuahuas today and chihuahua hair. Some chihuahuas have long hair and some have short hair. So we're going to use that today to do a test cross. So here's a long haired chihuahua and then a short haired one. Okay, so we know the known individual that we shows the recessive phenotype. So if the long hair was the dominant, with a big L, and then the short hair would be the recessive with little L. By just looking at this little chihuahua, we know what his genotype looks like because he only shows the recessive phenotype. And the only reason the recessive phenotype is shown is if there is no dominant allele because the dominant allele will take over. We know his genotype. So what we don't know is what a long-haired genotype is because it could be, again, it could be two dominant alleles or a dominant and one recessive allele. So that's what we want to find out. So it can be homozygous or heterozygous. So we can do that using a Punnett square. So we put the known on one side and then we put the unknown on the other side. And then we look at what the babies look like to figure out what this is here. Okay, so the result of the test cross. So if we mate a long-haired chihuahua with a short-haired chihuahua, we look at their puppies. These are some puppies. Here's a long hair and a short hair. All of the puppies show the dominant phenotype, or the long hair. Then the unknown individual is homozygous dominant. So it has both dominant alleles. And how do we know this? Because if we use the Punnett square, these ones will show the dominant phenotype. And if these puppies also show the dominant phenotype, then we know what this is. We know that this is a dominant allele as well. Because there's no recessive puppies. There's no short-haired puppies. So if all the puppies were long-haired. Okay. But if the puppies show both of the phenotypes, so if we get some long-haired and some short-haired, then we know that this individual here is heterozygous for hair length. It would have a dominant allele and a, as well as a recessive allele here because it would produce short-haired puppies. By looking at the offspring, we can figure out what this unknown is here. Our last practice question um, is going to be about ladybugs. So two parent ladybugs breed. The color red is represented by the letter R, so the big R. It's dominant over the color orange, which is represented by a little r. So red is dominant with the big R. Both parents are heterozygous for color. Okay, so because they're heterozygous, they, they have a dominant allele and a recessive allele. So they will both be red, like this one here, because the red is dominant over the recessive orange allele. Let's create a Punnett square for a cross between these two parents. So first, what is the genotype of the parents? So their parents are heterozygous. So if the parents are heterozygous, they're going to have one dominant allele and one recessive allele. So one big R and one little r. And next, we're going to place the parents' genotypes outside of our square here, like this. So we'll put the dad here and the mom here. So they each have one big R and one little r, one dominant and one recessive. Next, what are the possible offspring's genotypes? So we're going to fill in our square again and find out what our offspring are. And finally, we're going to find the probability. So we're going to use this information that's inside our square to determine the probability. So what is the probability that these ladybugs will have a red baby? So looking at this here, which ones of these would be red, would show the red phenotype? And remember the 
red is dominant, is, would be represented by a big R. So which of these squares here would show a red phenotype? So this first square here be red, because it's both big R's. This next one is also red because it has a big R, and this one as well. So there's three of our squares, or three out of four, or 75 percent. So th these ladybugs will have a 75 percent chance of having a red ladybug, and this last one would be orange. So 25 percent chance of having an orange ladybug baby. So now we're going to talk about um, the genotypic ratio and phenotypic ratio. So the genotypic ratio is the amount of different genotypes that result from a cross. The phenotypic ratio is the amount of different phenotypes that result from a cross. The genotypic ratio can be different from the phenotypic ratio because the phenotype can have two genotypes. So for example, in our ladybug example, the R is red, sensor red, it's dominant over. So this genotype would be red, but this genotype also would be red. Even though it has this recessive allele, it's also red. The most dominant should be listed first. So when we list our, the most dominant should be listed first. So this would be the order that they would be listed in when we're listing our ratios. So we would start off with the homozygous dominant, which is both dominant. Then we would move on to the next, which it has one dominant allele, heterozygous dominant, and then homozygous recessive. So these ratios would vary um, depending on the genotypes of the parents. So genotypic and phenotypic ratios will vary with different cases. Here's another Punnett square. So this is our ladybugs again. Okay, so the genotypic ratio for this ladybug cross, genotypic, so again we're looking at the genetic material, is 1, 2, and 1. So how do we get that? So we have one dominant, homozygous dominant, and we have two heterozygous dominant, and they're still dominant because they have a big R, and then we have one, one homozygous recessive genotype here, two and one. So that's how we write it. We would write it one, two to one. So that would be our ratio. And again, we always want to remember to do it starting with the most dominant first, so we know what these represent here. However, the phenotypic ratio would be a three to one, and it's different from this ratio here. And why is it three to one? So this first box is homozygous dominant, um, and it is red. So the phenotype of this genotype here is red. So this one here is also red. So there's two of these, and the phenotype here is also red. And this last one here um, is homozygous recessive, so they're both small, um, and that one is orange. So in the end, if we're just looking at phenotypes and not the genotypes, so now we're just looking at these here, we have three red, because we have one of these and two of these, and then we have one orange. So the ratio is going to be three to one. So that's how you find the phenotypic ratio.